morning everyone it is saturday and as usual i have had the loveliest morning i finished off the fern podcast and i finished off the blenheim palace episode of duchess the podcast oh what is going on here there we go um and today i am off down to where i grew up to visit my brother his wife and my nephews and niece which i'm really looking forward to we're all having basically like a um kind of lunch there so i thought i still have some apples to use so i thought i'd make a fresh uh apple crumble to take down for everyone and leave the ones in the freezer so that we can have dessert so that's what i'm going to kick off the day doing and I am loving my outfit today. It's one of the ones that I did on my TikTok and I'm pretty much gonna wear this the entire weekend. Um, the items from Arvel will have launched, so I'll link them in the description box down below. But other than that, I've got a fresh bottle of high growth bouquet on. I'm gonna make myself a coffee and I'm gonna get making some apple crumble. Ali's still in bed, by the way. <laughs> We have the crumble mix ready to go. Um, basically, I'm adapting a um, recipe from my Thermomix cookie dough, which is a rhubarb crumble. And instead, I'm using apples and adding in cinnamon and I think a little bit more vanilla extract, but that's what we're doing. this are exactly why I'm glad I have two Thermomix mixing bowls. And there we have the freshly made crumble. I think that's the last of the apples so I'm definitely going to ask my neighbour if I can have a few more because I have loved getting up to do this this morning. Well now that I have finished up in the kitchen we can set sail for my brother's house and this is my outfit for the day i'm wearing pretty much an all arvel look except for my jeans which are page and my boots which are hermes and my bag but everything else is arvel bow jumper blazer everything so we are ready to hit the road ali is just loading up the boot i'm coming at you from dash cam still waiting for my sticky thing that will go just there um but the worst thing about leaving the boys behind is the fact that they cry whenever we we aren't taking them but the thing is, is Barkley doesn't really like going in the car I don't think but I just think he just likes being with us but we are so lucky that we get to spend as much time with them up as we do aren't we the boys yeah. yeah I think I've got I think I left some treats in the car for the boys remember we said we we're gonna buy sweets I did Ali's stash of malworms <laughs> and strife I'm very happy about that I need that in my life right now Ali's a little bit hungover. Oh no. No. And oh, I just love the way you get that little flash of colour. It's such a gorgeous day today and I, I'm guessing because of the um, amount of sun and weather, all of the trees around here are going the most magical colour shades like yellows and oranges and it's just looking so, so beautiful. It really is. It, <laughs> That is so weird. It looks so beautiful that it just made me want to cry. Okay, I need to have a word with myself. <laughs> we have arrived at my brother's and I'm meeting their new chickens for the first time. I'm very, very jealous. Look how beautiful they are. Little chick chicks. So this is Lavender and this is one of my brother's chickens. And their kids basically kind of look after them and they get eggs every morning. Oh yes, I'm very inspired to get my chickens now. Can I get some chickens for Christmas? <laughs> yeah! Lovely feed. <laughs> Lovely feed. Come on, let's take you back. He's putting them away, yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. 
it's filming your, your lasagna test. Well, wait, wait till I do a better one. Okay. I'll do a better one. Smashed it. No, I mean, I'll cook a better one. Oh, it's a little bit charred, isn't it? No, no, it's meant to be crispy. Oh, okay. Like that. I, just think <laughs> over, I just think it's overcooked. No, it looks lovely. Right, Osti, you're going to show me your veg patch. Yeah. Come on then. Wow! So these are your tomatoes? Yeah, and I've got some strawberries here. They grow in autumn. Wow! And these are my radishes. radishes. Yeah, they're going to grow really tall. Really tall. tall. They need, if you pick them up now, <laughs> they'll just be Dad's roots. slippers on. Oh, I don't take it. <laughs> Lovely. Wait, are you videoing? Yes. Are you going to put that on YouTube? <laughs> and that's, that's coriander? Yeah. Yes. Hello, Flo Flo. And then I'm growing some beans over here. Oh, wow. Very nice. Flo Flo, have you got your and summer shoes on? And then this is apple mint. This is apple Very mint. nice and sparkly. Look, this is Oh, apple I like mint. apple mint. It smells really nice, doesn't it? Yeah. And it feels mm. nice. Mm. <laughs> it does feel nice. These are chives. So I like chives. Are you playing and the guitar? And then these used to be edamame. <laughs> these used to be edamame. They used to be edamame, but do you know what? Do you They're have, dead. You should ask um, Daddy to cut this into your eggs in the morning because it tastes delicious. Lots of chives in your scrambled oh, egg. No. Nice. Well, That's we lovely. Really get, we don't really get eggs this type of season. We normally get them in spring. Eggs. Oh, from the chickens, you mean? Yeah. Um, so you're going to come and help in my veg patch, yes? Yes. Okay, good. I'm very excited for that. Well done. I might bring, I might go to the garden centre and I might grab some vegetable healthy food for them to eat. Yes. Like put it on the ground and then it well absorbs. Well done, Flo Flo. You like put it underneath them and then it absorbs into the ground. Yeah, so that it gets more crop. Yeah. You get more food that way. Come on then, let's go inside so we don't get cold. Do you remember when you showed me your frog spawn in here? Yeah. There's Lovely. None this year. No frog spawn. Good morning everyone, it is Sunday and this is my outfit for the day. I've swapped over to the more chocolatey coloured blazer from Arvel and I'm wearing it with black page denim jeans, black Hermes boots, Madame Cellier 25 Birkin and an Arvel bow and also the Arvel jumper. Um, we are heading to farmhouse today with friends to have a Sunday roast and some wine and we're taking the dogs. This is going to be the, f the dog's first time at farmhouse and uh, one of their friends is going so we thought it might be a good idea to sort of get them, get them used to it a little bit. Um, we're going to see how this goes though because they can be quite wild and Porter was having a mad one this morning on his dog walk but hopefully it has tired him out just a little bit but um, yes that is the plan of action for today. We're about ready to set off so I'm going to get everything together. I'm taking my chocolate Johnston's of Elgin cardigan with me because it's always a few degrees cooler at Farmhouse and I've also got some leather gloves. I don't actually know where these are from. Where are they from? I think they're from me and M. Um, I can't find my uh, N peel ones. They're so soft. Yesterday was very, very lovely. We had such a wonderful day at my brother's and why am I so dark? Yeah, so we had such a lovely day at my brother's yesterday and then we came home and we started a series which in all honesty, I did not expect to enjoy as much as I am. It's called, what is it called? Anatomy of a Scandal. And obviously, usually I like historical dramas and I like a full kind of like holistical approach to programmes. I want to be like inspired by the outfits, inspired by the decor, um, but also gripped by the like plot, etc, etc. I really like Anatomy of a Scandal. It's got Sienna Miller, um, and I don't know who the other actors are, but um, it's very good so far. And oh my gosh, her house, the amount of Fornicetti wallpaper that is in her house is beautiful. And her outfits, Sienna Miller looks incredible. So I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, I've also had a delivery of fabrics. At the moment, I'm just sourcing lots of different fabrics 
um, for the house. But the thing that's really I'm struggling so much with. Basically, obviously our furniture is now on the back on the patio. And I wanted to have had our cushions reupholstered by now, but I haven't been able to find a tone of green for the cushions that is waterproof that I want. Basically, this is the colour. This is from Ian Mankin, England. And this is their Rami Plain Moss in, in the shade Moss. Oh, itchy nose. But this is in the shade Moss. So it's a darker green, but it complements really nicely with the colour of our greenhouse, that kind of more um, sagey green. And obviously it's darker, so it's not going to be so bad for the dogs when they jump on them, etc, etc. But it's not outdoor. What I want to do is pipe it with a really lovely oatmeal kind of fabric as well. So that it gives it a bit of detail. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. I look tired. I don't know why I look so tired and pale. I'm going to put some Sandra Pay Express on, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure why I look so pale today. I think I need to give my face a spritz of uh, Saint Tropez Express. But anyway, this is the sort of look that we're going for. Now, the colour's probably not going to come up as well on here as I would hope. My camera is struggling today. It's a very similar colour to my nail polish, which is cap and gown from CND. But this is what I want. And then I want to add detail and things like that with maybe some other... Uh, outdoor fabrics. This might not be the right one, but I really liked these kind of leafy bits. Or maybe going for more of a stripe. Oh, I found this. This is almost like a striped tweed. How fantastic is that with that charcoal double stripe through it? Imagine that. Oh, I just very much enjoy fabrics. So um, I'm kind of sourcing lots from different places. But if anyone has seen this more olivey, mossy toned green i think this is exactly what we want but we just can't find it it's so frustrating on the scale of not very frustrating things i also brought these lamps down from my dressing room i don't know if you remember i bought these about a year ago for my dressing room i was going to use them in there they're basically rechargeable lights and um you ch i've charged them up now i don't think they're on you can't really see because it's so bright i got these from amazon and um my camera is not having it today um they're rechargeable i've got them for the dining table out here because i think that they'll add a little bit more light out here as well we've got more lighting going in but for the most part um i just thought i'd get them out here i just can't wait for there to not be big machinery in the background if i'm perfectly honest with you but it is just feeling exceptional out here You okay, Blackie Boo? I can fit my whole hand underneath it. What? What are you crying for? I don't know if you can see how much we have protected the back of the car just in case we have little puppy sick. Although we're going to wait and feed them when we get to farmhouse. Oh, you are such a baby. I'm just a baby. Yes. Oh, crying sausages. Good morning everyone. I hope I don't look as tired as I feel because despite um, sharing a bottle of champagne yesterday and having some rosé, I think I ate enough that I'm absolutely fine. But I did wake up at 5.30 this morning, which is actually something that Ali and I is trying to make into our new like routine. We want to 
get up even earlier in the morning because we're looking to sort of change the times when we're doing dog walks and things like that. So we actually want to get, get up earlier. So we went to bed about half nine last night. I'm going to slowly get back into that routine. So yeah, I couldn't believe it when I actually woke up at half five, um, despite having such a lovely day. We were at the farmhouse from about one o'clock until eight o'clock and then the heavens opened and it was so lovely because we had our umbrellas, only one for the, for, um, the girls. And um, we were about to sort of make a run for it to the cars and then someone from the farmhouse drove past in a car, bundled us in with the dogs and drove us to our car, which was incredibly helpful. He was such a lovely man. The dogs were well behaved. So Porter always amazes me. He really is a little bit worse at home, I would say. I think it's because he thinks it's his territory. And I always think that he's gonna be the troublesome one when actually Barkley is the troublesome one when we're out because we've been bad in not socializing him enough so he gets very very excited by other dogs and he just wants to be friends with them and lick them and he just we need to make sure that he's spending a bit more time in like really sociable settings so yeah i think we're gonna make sure that we take him to farmhouse a little bit more because it really was exceptionally busy but also there was just so many different types of dogs for him to get used to as well so we had a really lovely time but today I'm up and I'm actually in the midst of doing some organisation in my dressing room. So this was done last week. Both me and my assistant worked on this. We haven't quite tackled the shoe shelf at the bottom just yet. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of, not getting rid of course, but like I'm just streamlining everything because it is ridiculous. Like um, I know that I've spoken about it before, but we get sent a lot of stuff. I'm stopping that at the moment in the sense that I'm really just cherry picking the brands that I want things for. And actually the industry has come such a long way that a lot of that a lot of PRs and things like that now actually message you before they send you anything, which I think is really considerate. And it just means that there isn't so much um, coming in that I don't need because I just don't need it. That's the, the main thing. And I don't want it to go to waste when it could go to someone that really loves it and, and wants um, and, and really loves the brand or whatever. So basically we've just been streamlining any out of date kind of um, beauty bits and pieces and also sorting out my perfume collection. And this has been a godsend. So these little acrylic shelves were my assistant's idea. And um, I'm not really into acrylic, but actually this is game changing. I can see all of my perfumes and these are all of my favourite brands and scents and it's just lovely being able to see them all and use them all and see how much is in each bottle as well. It's very good at highlighting when I pro probably need something replaced or I need to order something new. And then I've streamlined all of my hair care products down as well. Um, tanning is in there and it's just so much better. Then we've also done these drawers. So this used to be my everyday makeup drawer. And now, I mean, I literally have my makeup in here. Like that's, that's literally my everyday makeup in there. So this is now kind of like my everyday I reach for these. So like body creams, face mists, hair bands, bobbles, eye drops, etc., etc. And this has really been amazing. Also, all of these little inserts that look like they're part of the actual drawer, they're not. These are all from Amazon as well. So we just kind of flip them around and use them. Um, and then this is basically what I'm allowed in terms of makeup. This is all I'm keeping. So these are some bases. These are like palettes and um, compacts. This is like just top ups of my favorite things like the glass powder, CC serum, um, hydro powder. And then these are a very, very small selection of lipsticks that I love. I just honestly, I just got rid of everything because I am a creature of habit and I need to just lean into that a little bit more and not worry so much about having the newest things. Like it's the same with fashion. Basically I'm trying to apply this to my makeup as well and just kind of work with the things that I really, really, really love. This might seem like um, quite excessive to some, but then I know that there's some influencers that have like in entire walls of makeup, which obviously is, I know that they're the type of people that try and use things different every day. I'm just not that person. So this just works really, really well for me. Um, in here is just a few, oh, what are these doing in here? These shouldn't be in here. This is interesting because we've got more bases there. I'm thinking that perhaps, um, these are items that I need to still sort through, um, because these are not necessary in here. 
and that would be a really, really good extra draw to have. So I've still got to sort through that. And then this is like my little odds and sods. So all of my hair accessories, you need to go here. Thank you. Um, hair accessories, bows and things like that. It's just a good place to have it. And this has been massively sorted out into just the, the very few hair tools that I use um, and a lot of electric, electrical things that I still need to sort through as well. But my room at the moment, it hasn't actually come that far because we're still very much sorting. Oh my goodness. We're still very much. What happened to my hair? We're still very much sorting through everything and just editing everything down and I'm making sure that nothing is going anywhere that like um, it shouldn't be. So reused, resold or um, rehomed basically is what we're doing. So I wanted to show you a few bits um, that I've replaced because obviously I travel quite a lot. So I picked up some bits for my traveling escapades just to make my life a little bit easier because I, I use these plastic wallets so much and one thing I've realized about these plastic wallets is um, they're a lot obviously more sustainable now I'm not the queen of sustainability in any way shape or form however I find it easier to keep one of these packed and also just in good condition they just last so much longer than those women sandwich bags but every so often like I will travel to the ends of the earth with one of these. And every so often you'll come across someone in an airport that will say, you're not allowed that. And I'll be like, I literally travel like all the time with these things. It's so much better for the environment. I don't understand, you're not allowed. You have to take it out and use a sandwich bag. And I imagine that they're just, I don't know. They don't have, I know that they don't have to be like that because there's so many other places and I would have been through that airport before and it would have been fine. But sometimes people are just having potentially a bad day. So I'm hoping that this one, because it says it's allowed on airplanes and it's allowed in hand luggage, etc, etc. I'm hoping that this one is going to be okay and, and they can't argue with it. I'll be like, look, it's, it shows a plane on it. Um, and also my other ones have just got to a point where they're a little bit disgusting, like the zips are breaking. So this one for my like carry on liquids and I bought a couple just so I can have sort of one for where I'm traveling somewhere cold, one where I'm traveling somewhere hot, etc. Just so that, um, I've got everything that I need. This is the other thing that I got. I always travel with a compact mirror as well because you'll know if you follow any of my like uh, travel vlogs or anything, I get quite upset when there's not like a mirror near natural daylight or if there's nowhere good to do makeup. So I picked up this, which kind of folds down to almost like a um, laptop kind of, not even that, like it's much thinner. So this will fit in, I've got one of my hair's moving. So it folds down to like this, sort of size and I can just pop that in my toiletries bag and um, it charges up. I can have obviously the lights on, the light changes and you just fold it backwards. There we go. So you can turn the light on, you can have it slightly warmer, etc. You can use this on your dressing table if you want, but I've mainly got that for travel. And then I've also stocked up on my in suitcase kind of toiletry bags because mine were I'd had them since we were at our old house, so that was a very, very long time. And they were just breaking, so I got a bigger one for like all of those big things, then a slightly smaller one, and then just this one as well, just to, just to sort of have everything organized. I like to keep mine as much as possible packed, so I'll have duplicates of things. It just minimizes me ever forgetting something. I'll just link these down below because I think these are just a handy thing to have. Obviously, you keep them for a long time. I only get rid of them really when they're a bit manky like mine were. So those were just a few bits that I picked up. I did try a dupe for the It Cosmetics brush from Amazon because the It Cosmetics brush is that I use for my foundation is £30 and this one was £5. Would not recommend. And I want to say that that's, there's a lot of times that I do that, that I'll buy something and I'll be like, no, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so I did actually order. I thought I'd show you actually what I got from, I did a bit of shopping over the weekend. I had a lovely evening on Friday where Ali went to see his friends. Um, I had a lovely evening, just chilled. And I did a little bit of shopping. So I thought I'd show you these bits that I got. I did a cult beauty order of some bits that I wanted to try. There's still um, some other bits. Well, there's one other thing. There's this IGK spray. Maybe you might have tried it. There's this girl I follow on TikTok with beautiful hair. She's got like beautiful red auburn hair. 
and she does all of like these um, videos about products. And there's an IGK No Limit spray. I went into Space NK to try and get it and it, it was sold out. Um, but I don't want to get anything that's going to be drying on my hair because I have to be really careful about the ends. It's all fine up here, but it's just the ends of my hair it can make it break a little bit more. So if you've tried the, the IGK, it's like a volumizing spray. If you've tried it, let me know if it's going to be too drying because I want to order it and I wanted to try it beforehand. Um, so this is what I got. I topped up with two new It Cosmetics brushes because one of mine fell apart and the other one I think I just deserved. That I've had them since, again, I was at my old house. So two new ones of those. I then treated myself to a new cleanser. And this is really interesting. Do you know how much I used to love my Amora Vitsa cleanser? It was like one of my first major beauty cleansers that I just loved. And I've fallen out of love with it. And that's something that I've like had to, I've been using this for such a long time. I'm hoping my skin isn't gonna break out from changing it, but I have loved that product for such a long time and I've been using it downstairs. And I was like, I actually don't like this product, it's annoying me because it's actually really hard now to get it to foam up. It's quite, a, it's quite a messy cleanser and actually I end up wasting a lot. So I had to admit defeat. So that was kind of why I went onto Cult Beauty to try and find a new cleanser. So I bought the Clé de Peau Softening Cleansing Foam and it just sounded really nice. They did have another, it was a clarifying cleansing foam. I did want to try that but it was sold out so I thought I would try they're softening ones. I'm going to put this by the sink this evening. And the other thing I needed to top up on. Yes, I'm very interested to try. Oh, it's already open. I did not expect that. Should it not have a seal? Interesting. Anyway, I'm going to try that tonight. I topped up on my Pie Century Flower Calm Mist. Is this the same one? Yes, you. So this is my, if you remember, I worked with Cult Beauty a couple of months ago and I bought this and it is almost empty. This is the most beautiful face mist that has ever existed. When you smell it, it is beautiful, but it's also hands down the most hydrating I have ever, ever used. So I bought myself another one basically because there is no way that I'm going without that. So once that's finished, I will use all of that to the end. The other thing that I ordered is a brand that I absolutely love. So this is a brand called De Mamiel, and I don't know if you remember, but a month after I got married, I went back to my wedding venue with Cult Beauty for an overnight stay, and the actual founder of De Mamiel was giving a talk there, and it was very, very exciting. She's just incredible, and they do seasonal face oils, which just stole, just always has stolen my heart. And so I treated myself to the autumn face oil and I will probably treat myself to the winter one as well. Should we have a little sniff? It's just such a beautiful brand. It really, really is. And I feel like not many people know too much about it. Oh, I love that. I just love it. So my autumn face oil will be going on. And then I picked myself up some liquid vitamin D3 from Solga. Um, this was recommended to me by my um, acupuncturist. She says I need to get more of this in myself, so that's what I did. And then, wild card, I decided to buy something from Westman Atelier. This is by Gucci Westman. And I thought I would try one of their like balmy lipsticks. What is this? Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm. Yeah, so it's very interesting to, for a liquid lip balm. I don't know if that's gonna be a gloss or what, but this is quite a nice color. So it feels like a balm. Has a really nice kind of nudie, nudie color to it. You definitely need a liner underneath it, but I do that anyway. Nice. I have to update you on this one because it takes me a while to get used to products and just see where they fit in and whether they suit me, but very nice. The other thing that I've had another clear out of is handbags. So you might notice that I have moved this uh, vintage Louis Vuitton vanity case onto this beautiful book. I bought loads of these from Setu. They put them on their Instagram from the markets in Provence and I instantly, instantly had to have them and they're so big and they make the perfect 
handbag stands. So um, I have decided to sell a few of my Lady Dior's, um, just the medium ones. I just don't wear the, the medium ones as much as I, as I thought I would, especially my floral one, my wildflower one, even though that's my favorite collection ever from Dior. I wanted that bag in the small version and it never, it was never made, sadly. And so, yeah, sold some of those. Well, I haven't sold them yet. I'm like packaging them up at the moment to send to Cellier. Um, also my, my Constellation uh, Lady Dior is also going as well. And just a few other bits and pieces that I don't wear just because I am really, really editing things down. And there was an interesting conversation actually in my comment section about the um, Hermes handbag, which I don't dispute, maybe one day it will be um, a trend bag, I'm, I'm not too sure, but for me, right now I'm getting the absolute wear out of all of them. And I do think that because of their history and how long they've been in the Hermes inventory, I don't know whether I'll be put off them ever, but could be famous last words, I don't know. But yeah, I'm, re I'm just, I'm wearing them so much at the moment that I'm just making sure that whatever I'm buying from, from brands nowadays are like steeped in the history of the brands and very much intrinsically linked. So like, even though at the moment I'm not wearing much Chanel, I'm not selling my classic Chanel's because I know that I will wear them and love them. So yeah, just a little bit. I also bought these boots from Amazon, by the way. These are like a sort of rubber Wellington boot riding boot. I thought these looked very practical, but still nice. So say you're going somewhere muddy, you might want to have something that looks a bit more like a riding boot. I don't think that these will replace my Holland Cooper ones because my Holland Cooper ones are like Sherpa lined, which you don't have to wear socks with. So they're just the easiest things to slip my feet into in the morning when I'm going on a dog walk. Um, but I thought for something as an option, um, I'll show you them on at some point. But I also did another order as well because I realized that I needed some more jeans in my life. So my white jeans, my white like tight jeans are, have holes in. So I wanted to get some new tight like skinny white jeans and I wanted to get some blue jeans as well. And I realized that I've, I've had my page black, like my black page denim Hoxtons for literally a hundred years, not that long. And I thought I'd try some other colors in that style from the brand because they're about as high waisted as I can get. I've obviously got my beautiful um, white jeans from Beaufort and Blake, but they are much more of like a loose fitting mum jeans style. Whereas these are to go in boots and things like that. I also wanted to try a belt. So this is from Mulberry and I think I'm gonna love this, you know, because I have needed, oh, I don't know, it might be a little bit too much on the front. I'm hoping that Mulberry is on its way to go back to its roots, but I need a skinny black belt with gold hardware to go with my Birkin. And obviously I'm trying to find the CDC belt, but I thought I would try this because I was actually really impressed with their belts when I looked at them online. I may need to put another, another hole in this, but I bought myself a hole punch on Amazon, so I can't actually do that without ruining anything. But let's try this one. Slightly bigger than this one. I think I'd probably want it to be a bit smaller. Um, oh gosh, wow, yeah. We're gonna need to put another hole in. And I'm not sure if the gold is as nice. Hmm. What do you think? So they do one that's got kind of like the, I think it's like the poly lock or something on it, um, in the tan, which I thought was lovely, but I'm not sure if this is the right belt. So I may have to send this one back. We shall see. Um, that was kind of like an add-on purchase. Put that back in the box for now. And then I ordered some skinny page denim jeans in white, because I think I'll wear them still in winter. Nice, soft, soft denim. And then I wanted a really nice inky wash as well. Now I'm not too keen on these bits. I wanted it like plain, but they didn't really have anything. But again, just a nice high-waisted, fairly chill, no rips or holes or anything like that. Just a, a clean pair of denim because yeah, I, I felt like I needed um, something a bit smarter. It's not really, I'm not really wearing any ripped jeans at the moment. So yeah, I ordered those from Selfridges. Selfridges do brilliant delivery. I ordered them Saturday night, they were delivered on Sunday, which I thought was blooming 
wonderful. But yeah, those are some bits that I've been buying. It's still all go in the garden. Um, we're having some lights changed because I think I mentioned already in my previous video we need to change the floor lights because they're not powerful enough and we're just looking at more lighting to add to the, the terrace so that it's a lot more like lit up. So still busy, probably, oh and we've also started on the front gates as well and the pathways are coming along really nicely so we're having a wall built to give us a bit more privacy and safety etc etc and then also then knocking down our front gate walls so it is all go and it is very very bright in here and by the way I am having a new camera delivered today I think because there's a black thing on my screen somewhere that I just it's just annoying me so yeah anyway that's the start of the day I'm still going to spend some time in my dressing room giving it a good organize and getting on top of things as well okay I have one more thing to unbox with you but I've been so excited for this to arrive obviously in my last video I told you about the fern podcast well I followed them on Instagram and when I followed them they reached out and offered to send me their newest fragrance basically Fern is a fragrance brand and they release seasonal fragrances every year, so four fragrances. And this is their autumn 2022 fragrance. I believe that they're made essentially to order. So you have to sort of join their list and then you can get the fragrance. I'm not expecting to like every single fragrance they ever make, but I am very, very excited to try this. So it's an organic eau de parfum. I'm really interested in... Um, just getting to know the brand a little bit better because it seems exceptionally beautiful it's doing something different and i enjoyed the podcast so so much so a uh, little note from the team this is um their latest fragrance a black tea scent with a twist warmest wishes all at fern and it's made in the uk as well which i think is absolutely lovely so let's get into the box mm -hmm. to keep perfume Break seal. Oh my gosh. It's another seal there. Oh my goodness, it's very small. I was expecting something bigger. Oh, oh, this smells lovely. So it stays, oh, so the packaging that it stays in. I'm very confused. Hold on a minute. There's more. Ah, so they've sent it with an autumn tea developed by Fern in organic, in collaboration with the Organic Herb Trading Company, our neighbour in Milverton, Somerset. Two times tea bags, oat straw flower tops, rosebud cardamom pod, orange peel, spearmint, coriander, fennel seed, chamomile and marshmallow root. I didn't know marshmallow had a root. So this is a sampling kit. Um, for you to get to grips with the fragrance. So if you wanted to try it before you buy it, you can order a sampling kit, I imagine. And it comes with a little vial and you can, it gives you all kind of like the details on how to sample the fragrance, which I think is lovely. It's all basically centered around sustainability and um, you know, being able to recycle and reuse, etc., etc. Now let's get a sniff of this. Oh my gosh, I've just eaten that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely stunning and like nothing I have in my collection. Oh, it just gets better and better. It's got this real kind of like spiciness to it when you, um, spray it initially a real kind of like warm spiciness it's not like a like it's not like a spiky spicy it's really kind of like warm and enveloping wow and you're right there's just kind of a little twist at the end just a very because I was very interested when they said it was citrusy I was like is this going to be a little bit um kind of like Christmas fragrance but not at all, it's just got this really subtle twist at the end. That is absolutely stunning. Wow. I really, I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I do. And when I say that, I mean I actually love it. I'm gonna wear it for the day and I'm gonna update you, but. I love the spray bottle as well. It's got a really healthy spray to it. Oh, wow, I'm so impressed. 
Oh, so impressed. But honestly, if you don't go like trying to order the fragrance yourself after listening to that podcast, I don't know what will make, make you want to do that because it's so beautiful. So, oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna love this. We are going to love this. This. Let me read you what this says. You might not enjoy this, and sometimes when I feel like I read you things, you might, it might bore you a little bit and add to the video, but. A misted morning in the herb garden. Golden droplets gleam on stems. In a gently sloping valley south of Somerset's Quantic Hills lies a biodynamic herb, herb farm. Come September, it brims with sunset colours, echinacea pink, cornflower blues, the blush of marshmallow and calendula's deep burnt orange. Rows of cool lavender and bay frame the borders. The scent of the garden alone is spectacular, but on days when there is a light breeze, it is made all the more complex by the addition of dried spices, cardamom, cumin, clove. And that is exactly, what, and I don't even like cumin, okay, but that, it doesn't smell like cumin at all. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love how many incredible brands are, are launching here in the UK at the moment. It is so exciting. These spices gathered from organic fields around the world and used in, in blends by the herb farm, bring a warmth to the old factory landscape, drifting into the green gold of the surrounding countryside. Just along the lane from the herb farm is the Fern Studio. And this heady mingling of herbs and spices has long provided inspiration for our fragrances for 2022. We decided to recreate the Accord. I won't read you any more because um, you can get some basic understanding of it yourself, but I am in love. Oh, I'm in love. I'm in love, what a wonderful brand.